Well, we're looking forward to hearing Dr. Cherian. I met him in 2015 for the first time when I went with Dr. Ken Fielder and Worldview Ministries to India. Uh, got to go there and be part of the pastor's conference as he's held there for many years. And a uh, tremendous, tremendous time. Uh, I think uh, well over 200 or 400 pastors come. And, of course, the students are there from the college. And it's just a uh, great, great time uh, together. And I enjoyed uh, my time there, got to go back again in 2017, 15 and 17, I believe is when I went, and uh, just uh, enjoyed every time immensely. Uh, this man has done a tremendous job. God has done a tremendous work through him uh, at the college there, and uh, thousands of graduates now scattered throughout the world uh, preaching the gospel and uh, spreading the good news, and uh, they <clears throat> looking to have a, another wonderful enrollment this year. They're on their break right now. They'll be starting up here very soon, and uh, we're looking forward to, you're, you're in for a real treat to hear him preach this morning. We're going to have a special. I'm going to pray. We'll have a special, and then Dr. Terry and you come right after the special and preach the Word of God to us. All right, let's pray together. Father, thank you for this morning. Thank you, Lord, again for Dr. Cherian and what you have done there in Combiator, India. Lord, thank you for the, uh, the, your hand upon his life and the ministry there. 
the college, the, the, the Christian schools, the orphanages, uh, all that you have done, Lord, thank you. And I pray that you'll use him now this morning to, to minister the word of God to us. Uh, Lord, uh, control our thoughts, our minds. Lord, help us to focus on the message you have for each of us this morning. I pray you'll bless the special to that end, that our heart will be put in tune with your heart, and that we'll all have ears to hear what the Spirit would say to his church this morning. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. This is Allison Reed. Is Bob up here too? Are you singing a solo? Okay. This is Bob's sister. Some of you don't know who this is. And uh, she's uh, in law school, I believe, in Virginia. And uh, she's going to sing the special for us today. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretched soul like me. I once was lost, but now am found. My eyes were blind, but now I see God's grace has taught. It's a great joy and delight for me to be with you this morning. We truly enjoyed Pastor's visit with us. And I told him yesterday if he wanted to come back again, we wanted him to come back. One condition, he has to bring his wife along. <laughs> so just we truly enjoyed uh, yesterday the cookout there, ministering God's word. Now I would like to share a word of testimony before I bring God's word to you. I trusted in the Lord in the year 1967. I strongly believe with all my heart, faith comes by hearing God's word. In 1967, one of my cousins shared the gospel with me. I remember one of the verses he used was from the book of Revelation, chapter 21, verse 8, which tells the unbelieving and the abominable and the murderers, whoremongers, sorcerers, and the idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with the fire and brimstone which is the second death. At the end he asked me this question, if I were to die that day, where would I spend my eternity? I said, I don't know. Then he showed me from God's word, if I receive the Lord Jesus Christ into my heart, I can be saved. That day I asked Jesus Christ to come into my heart. Ever since I believe with all my heart, there is absolutely no substitute for being born again. When Nicodemus went to the Lord Jesus Christ, he looked at him and said, Rabbi, we know that you're a good teacher who come from God. No man can do this miracle such that God be with you. What did Jesus say? Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Think about Nicodemus, a religious man, 
a ruler of the Jews asked a counter question to Jesus and asked, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus said, That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto you, You must be born again. Immediately after my salvation, I was introduced to a Bible college which was founded by a Canadian missionary by name, Dr. Jake Johnson, studied there five years. Pastor in a small independent Baptist church for seven years in the city of Mysore, the southern part of India. Then in 1979, I came over to this country, went to Bob Jones University and also to San Francisco Baptist Theological Seminary. Finished a little more of my education, I went back to India. When I went back to India, my heart was truly moved and challenged by seeing the millions and millions of people in the land of India. India is only one third of the land mass of America. We have close to four times more people, 1.3 billion. Often people would ask how to fathom, how to understand a billion. Let me illustrate it for you how to have a grasp of a billion. There is a door over there, there is a door over here. If one billion people would stand one behind the other, make a big line, try to come through that door and try to go out through that door, it would take 14 long years. 84% of them, they are Hindus, 11% Islamic people, 3% claim to be Christians. If you would ask me what percentage of them are truly born again, I should say one half of a 1%. Those 84% of a billion Hindus, they have 33 million gods and goddesses. Anything crossing the path is a god for them. They bow down and worship all those idols which are made with their own hands. As the Bible tells us, professing themselves to be wise, they become fools. Every religion in the world teaches people to teach people to do, do, do. Someday you are going to make it. Bible is the only one which teaches us it's done. We don't do a thing to be saved except in trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ as our personal Savior and God. I believe with all my heart the greatest doctrine in the Bible is the substitutionary death of the Lord Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians 5.21 we read, For he hath made him to be sin for us. He knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. That proposition in is very, very important. This morning Sunday school was a tremendous blessing. If you miss it, you need to get a tape and listen to that. What a tremendous Sunday school. In him and him alone salvation. There is no other way a person can be saved. So I asked the Lord, Lord, what can I do? How can I reach some of these people with the gospel? The Lord laid the burden in my heart to start a Bible college, starting a Bible college, no money, no place. No facilities, went ahead and rented three rooms by paying $5 monthly rent. What can you get for $5 today? Maybe a greasy hamburger and a Coke. <laughs> That's where the history of the South India Baptist Bible College started. It started with seven students. We were there in that facility for five years. All along we prayed and asked the Lord to give us our own property. Now we have a beautiful property with a lot of good buildings. And the Lord blessed. To make the long story short, in 35 years' time, we graduated over 4,000 students, started over 1,000 churches all across India, Nepal, Bhutan, Tibet, Myanmar, Bangladesh, Thailand, Singapore, some other places too. Now, we have three schools and two orphanages. Perhaps you may look at me and ask, well, when the action is back in India, what am I doing here? Somebody asked me how many trips he made. This is my 61st time I travel all across this country many, many, many times. I never ever came to this country to raise a quarter of a dime support for me. I don't need it. Not one quarter of a dime. If somebody would give, I always tell them, you give for the work of God. I'm not here to pick anybody's pocket to create an emotion in the hearts of people to get anything. I don't need it. As a matter of fact, Pastor, he, he has seen it. My family puts more money than anyone else. So we are not, I'm not here to create an emotion in your heart to get anything from you. And many of those young men and women who come to the Bible college practically come with a shirt on their back. Many things you take it for granted, it is not there. I have been coming to raise support to put those young men and women through the school. There was one time 
we had over 721 students. Last year we had 416. You can break it down, simple math, even it costs to provide education and provide food for those young people, pay for the faculty and the staff, it takes 40,000 a month just to keep that door open. The money has to come from somewhere, but God has been faithful. We never missed a meal. We never missed a payment. God has been faithful in providing the needs. Please turn your Bibles with me to the book of First Thessalonians chapter 1. The book of First Thessalonians chapter 1. I'm going to read this entire chapter, only 10 verses are there. You're not going to hear anything new. All what I, I'm about to say, you already heard. But I'm going to just repeat it again, that's all. The book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. All the 10 verses. Paul and Silvanus and Timotheus unto the church of the Thessalonians, which is in God the Father, and in the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be unto you, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. We give thanks to God always for you all making mention of you in our prayers. Remembering without ceasing your work of faith, and labor of love, and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ, in the sight of God and our Father. Knowing, brethren, beloved, your election of God. For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power and the Holy Ghost and much assurance, as you know what manner of men we were among you for your sake. And you became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost, so that you were ensembles to all that believe in Macedonia and care. Notice verse 8. For from you... Sounded out the word of the Lord not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place your faith to God would be spread abroad so that we need not speak anything. For they themselves show us what manner of entering in we had unto you, how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. Let's pray. Our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for your precious word. Lord, I pray that will truly speak to our hearts. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. The title of the message is this, What kind of people God wants us to be? In other words, the type of people God expects us to be. You may look at me and say, well, we all know what kind of people we should be. As you listen, I want you to ask two questions to yourselves. There is two simple questions. Question number one. Do I have a desire to reach the lost with the gospel? Now your pastor Slabak cannot answer that question for you. You need to answer that question to yourself. Do I have a desire to reach the lost with the gospel? Question number two, have I surrendered my life to God? Again, he cannot answer that question for you. You need to answer. Now, if we, uh, the answer is a negative, then you need to do, some, to do something about it. If you don't have a desire, you need to pray and ask the Lord, Lord, give me a passion for souls. Burden my heart that I might be able to go and tell others about you. That mandate is given for all people. You may not be a preacher, you may not be a teacher, but if you are a born again Christian, that mandate, that commission is given to all of us. Now, I would like to give you a, just a brief background of this epistle. It is always good to know. Apostle Paul was a man who was truly burdened to reach the lost with the gospel. During his second missionary journey, he traveled to Philippi. There he was persecuted, people threw him in jail. In a miraculous and wonderful way, he and his colleagues, they were able to come out of the prison. When he came out, he traveled from there to Ambipolis, from there to Apollonia. Finally, he reached to a place called Thessaloniki. You know how many miles he traveled? 
99 miles from Philippi to reach Thessalonica. What did he do there? He preached again. Persecution started there. All these things are chronicled there in Acts chapter 17. You want to get a good background? Read Acts chapter 17 and you find it there. Now, Acts chapter 17 tells us he was there less than a month. Three Sabbath days that he had to leave from that place. Later on, Apostle Paul wrote this epistle to commend those people. Encourage them what they were doing. That's just a brief background of this epistle. Now, I'll give you what I'm about to say. What kind of people God wants us to be? Now, we could go from Genesis to Revelation. If I would start to do that, your pastor would look at me and say, let my people go. <laughs> so you need to go and have a good dinner or a lunch, whatever you call. But I'm going, it would not take much time, but I would like to just point out a few things from God's word. Now, notice in verse 3, it says, Remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. What kind of people God wants us to be? The answer we find, one of the answers we find in verse 3. They were laboring people. Down through the years, theologians have tried to explain what is this work? What is this labor? Apostle Paul is talking about. There is a sharp distinction between work and labor. If you would read 10 different commentaries, you would find 10 different answers. And they will say, well, the people in Thessalonica, they were social workers. They did a lot of social activities. They were involved in comforting the sick and helping the poor and the needy and all kinds of things. But that's not what Apostle Paul is talking when he commended them about the work and labor. Perhaps you may ask me, go ahead and tell us. The answer we find in verse 8. For from you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place. Your faith to God word is spread abroad so that we need not to speak anything. If you read it carefully, their work of faith, their faith led them to work. But something else is there in verse 3. It says, their love produced labor. They, labor is something different from work. They did, whatever they were doing, they did their very maximum to bring others to the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, what kind of people God wants us to be? Why these things are given in God's word? For our encouragement. That we also should do the very same thing. As I already mentioned, the mandate is given to all of us. If you are a born again Christian, your responsibility to reach the lost with the gospel. This reminds me of the words of the Lord Jesus Christ who said, I must work the work of him that sent me while it is day when the night comes. No man can work. Would you take it as a challenge? To get this gospel, glorious gospel, out in the hands of men and women who are groping in darkness. So, one lifetime opportunity, friends. When they leave, then they breathe their last breath, that opportunity gone. This generation must reach with this generation. We have a solemn responsibility God has placed in our hands. Now, Apostle Paul truly commended them and said, your work of faith, and labor of love. May God Almighty encourage us to be laboring for the cause of Christ. What a joy it brings to our hearts when we see men and women coming to know the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior and God. This morning, Pastor was teaching from the book of Acts chapter 8 about the Ethiopian eunuch. And they both rejoiced. And they went their way. Number one, God expects us to be laboring people. Now notice in verse 6, and you became followers of us and of the Lord. How? The answer is given there. Having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost. What an amazing thing. You know what type of people were they? They were receptive people. Receptive people. What did they receive? They received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost. 
and I was telling in the cookout, at the cookout, I met just last month I was in West Virginia, I met an old lady about 80 years old, over 80 years old. Her son took me to visit her. You know what she told me? Every 21 days, she reads the whole Bible. Can you imagine every 21 days, she reads the entire Bible? What an amazing thing it is. For faith and practice, what God Almighty has given to us is his word. If you expect to grow, that we all ought to read and meditate upon God's word. You know, years ago, one of the generals from Queen Victoria's army approached her and asked a profound question. Now the question he asked, could you kindly explain to me how did you achieve this great kingdom? She paused for a minute and said, that book accounts for the supremacy of England. That book accounts for the supremacy of England. George Washington said it is impossible to rightly govern the world without God and the Bible. Abraham Lincoln, the 16th the president of your country said, but for this book, we could not know right from wrong. Job chapter 23 verse 12 says, I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. Jeremiah chapter 15 verse 16 says, Thy words were found, and I did what? Eat them. Thy words were found, and I did eat them. Often we complain and say, well, we have only 24 hours of the day. I'm busy with my kids and my wife and my job, and there are a lot of other things happens in my life. Therefore, I don't have much time. The first thing we neglect is reading God's word. I'll give you an example. My son's father is a Hindu convert. Ten children. A big Bible college. In his lifetime, he established over 2,000 churches through his graduates. And I taught there 25 years. The man had seven heart, attack, heart attacks and open heart surgery. A Hindu convert. In his lifetime, he read the Bible over 300 times. Friends, that speak well of a man. May God Almighty give us the word and to read and meditate upon God's word. We have three Christian schools. When we say Christian school, 90% of those kids who come and study in the schools, they are heathen kids. But it's a tremendous opportunity to inculcate the truth to those young hearts. Many of them trust in the Lord for salvation. A few years ago, one of the young ladies gave a testimony Tears rolling down from her, her eyes, this is what she said. I have one prayer request, would you pray for me? When I read God's word, pray that my parents will not persecute me. I know there are young people who got saved from Islamic background or Hindu background. They wanted to read God's word, but the Hindus or the Islamic people, they wouldn't allow them to take God's word to their home. Many of them, they keep the Bible in their box or under their pillows. When everyone goes to bed, they open it and read and put it back again. And I often tell people this country has been truly blessed by God. No one is, is going to persecute you for reading God's word, maybe in the, in the so-called so -called public school. Now notice here, you became followers of us and of the Lord. How? Having received the word in much affliction, the joy of the Holy Ghost. Friends, when we read God's word, we ought to enjoy. When you sit in front of a juicy steak, when you put that knife, you truly enjoy it, right? The way we need to enjoy reading and studying and meditating upon God's word. What type of people God wants us to be? God wants us to be laboring people. He wants us to be receptive people. Now notice verse 7. So that you are ensembles to all that believe in Macedonia and Achaia. You know what type of people were they? They were exemplary people. The old English word ensample simply means what? Examples. The day in which we live, people do not want to hear anything about leading a consistent Christian life. You know what's the cry of the world today? Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Don't tell me anything about leading a consistent godly life. But think about these people who got saved. Apostle Paul truly commended them and said, 
you are examples you are examples to all that believe in macedonia often young people the bible college would approach me and ask a question what area we we should be examples and i tell them the whole christian ethics is being summed up where it says whether you eat or drink whatsoever you do do all for the glory of god you know what the definition for the english word all in english language all means all whether you eat or drink whatsoever you do do all for the glory of god yesterday i was at the cookout i was telling born again christians will never stand before the white throne judgment of god we never no white throne judgment for a born again believer but we all will stand before the bema which is the judgment seat of christ that's why the bible exhorts us and cautions us and say don't build your lives with wood hay and stuff refrain from those things friend what would happen when wood hay and stubble is cast in the fire it's going to be burned but the bible exhorts us and say build your lives with silver gold and precious stones the day is going to come the test is going to be through the fire every man's work is going to be tested by fire if if our work stands before god almighty we will hear that great commendation Well done thou good and faithful servant. You want to hear that commendation from God? Do that which is right. Well done thou good and faithful servant. May God almighty help us that we live a life which is pleasing in his sight. Now what type of people God wants us to be? God wants us to be laboring people. He wants us to be receptive people. He wants us to be exemplary people. Now notice verse 8. For from you, for from you, not only from Pastor Slabad, for from you, what? Sounded out the word of the Lord. Not only in Macedonia, in Achaia, but also in every place, your faith to God word is spread, spread abroad. Sir, we need not to speak anything. You know what type of people were they? Mission mind. For from you, the Lord did not entrust the responsibility of reaching the world with the angels. God entrusted that responsibility with us. For from you sounded out. Every time I think about the word sounded out, I think about the sound board. You know what, how the sound board functions? The sound board functions, it takes the middle place. The sound comes from one direction and it hits the board. And as soon as it hits the board, it projects it out for the benefit of others. That's what exactly being done by the believers in Thessalonica. They were receptive people. What they received, they did not keep it for themselves. They have given it out. They projected it out for the benefit of others. Many of us, we act like Dead Sea. And what happened to the Dead Sea? Everything goes in the Dead Sea, stays there, no let out. For from you sounded out the word of the Lord. Friends, when is the last time that you handed out a tract or talked to some people about the Lord Jesus Christ? Wow. Well, I often come across people who would say, well, I'm saved. I have no desire to tell others about the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, what I tell them when you go home, read the Gospel of Luke chapter 16, reading from verses 19 down to 31. I'm not going to narrate the whole story about rich men and Lazarus, but the Bible tells us in the book of Luke, Gospel of Luke chapter 16, the rich man closed sumptuously here upon this earth. Everything his heart could wish, he had it there. But he lived a luxurious life but there was a man by name Lazarus who was said to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table but the Bible tells us moreover dogs came and licked his sores. Rich man died he went to hell. Lazarus died he went to heaven. When the rich man was in hell he raised his head and saw Lazarus sitting in the bosom of Abraham. What did he say? Father Abraham how mercy upon me and what? Tormented here in this flame. Send Lazarus so that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. What do you hear? There's a great gulf fixed. Then he cried out and said, I have five brothers. I don't want them to come to this place of torment. Send one from the dead so that he can testify to my brothers. What did he hear? They have Moses and the prophets. If they don't hear Moses and the prophets, even if one goes from the dead, they're not going to believe. For from you sounded out the word of the Lord. This reminds me the example of Charlotte Tucker, an English missionary lady. At the age of 54, the Lord called her and said, I want you to go to the northern part of India. She tried to argue with the Lord and said, Lord, I'm 54 years old. 
My skin color is different. I don't speak their language. The moment I go there, they would kill me. She tried to escape, but the burden the Lord placed in her heart was so heavy. Finally, she said, Lord, I will go to the northern part of India to preach your word. At the age of 54, she left the shores of England. You know how many years she was there? 18 long years. On a Christmas Eve, she went to be with the Lord. In one year time, she was able to learn the Hindustani language. Even in the northern part of India, people speak about Charlotte Tucker. You may think, well, I'm 60 years old, 70 years old. Age is no matter to God. He's looking for men and women who would say, Lord, here am I, send me. Maybe you will be able to get across your street and tell some people about the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, need not even an eloquent preacher to give the gospel. Gospel is nothing but good news. What type of people God wants us to be? God wants us to be laboring people. Receptive people. Exemplary people. Mission minded. Now notice verse 9. For they themselves show us what manner of entering in we had unto you. How you turn to God. From what? From idols to serve the true and the living God. Is it not an amazing truth? You and I, we worship the true and the living God as opposed to those 33 million gods and goddesses the heathen people worship. They turn to God. You know what that particular portion speaks about? They were separated people. They turn to God from idols to serve the true and the living God. These days we hear a lot of preaching about reformation. Friends, may I say, reformation can never save a single soul. And I often tell people, can you reform a pig? You can get a nice pig, give a bath, put a ponytail, put an, I mean, um, a nice chain and a coat and all kinds of things. Give a nice bath to a pig and take the pig for a walk, evening walk instead of a dog. When that, when that pig sees the mud and mire, what would happen? It will go back to that mud and the mire. Reformation can never save a single soul. Only regeneration. Now the principle is this. They turn to God from idols to serve the true and the living God. That, as pastor was giving it us in the Sunday school, there are a lot of sincere people, but they are sincerely lost. What they need is the word of God. They need to understand what did Jesus do for them. He died on that cross for their sins, asking Jesus Christ to come to their heart. I remember the story of a young man, my cousin who led me to the Lord, led this man also to the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, talking about Dr. Varghese. This 84-year-old Hindu man trusted in the Lord for salvation. The evening time when he went back home, he started to pull down all the idols he was worshipping for many, many years. The sons came out and asked, what went wrong with you? Why are you destroying all these idols? You know what the old man said? I trust in the Lord for salvation. I can no longer serve these idols and Christ at the same time. Amen. Friends, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, our old things are passed away. That's why the Bible tells us in the book of 1 John, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world, the lust of the eyes and the lust of the flesh and the pride of life, these are not of the Father, but the world. The world passeth away, and the lust thereof, he that doeth the will of God, what? Abideth forever. Is it not an amazing thing? Someday you and I, we are going to spend eternity with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen. They turn, to, for they themselves show us what manner of entering we had, how we turn to God, first thing. They turn to God from idols to serve the true and the living God. You may not be worshipping an idol today made with the hands. But if you love anything more than our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, that can become an idol. One last thing. Notice verse 10. It says, And to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus which delivered us from the wrath to come. You know what type of people were they? They were expectant people. Waiting for whom? Waiting for the glorious return of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I believe with all my heart, friends, someday our Savior is going to come. One of the characteristics of God is immutability. That big theological word simply means unchangeableness. He will not change. 
he promised to come he is going to come we he, we don't know the time we don't know the hour we don't know the year but one thing is sure he is going to come scoffers may ask the question since 2000 years went by where is the promise of his coming when is he going to come but the answer is there he is not slack concerning his promise he is waiting for that last soul to be saved when that quorum is full he is going to come and we will be taken away from this world to be with him for ever and ever and ever may god almighty speak to our hearts if nothing else has spoken to your hearts today Would you ask the Lord, Lord, give me a burden for souls? What type of people God wants us to be? Laboring people, receptive people, exemplary people, mission-minded, separated people, above all, expectant people, waiting for that glorious return. Now, if we cannot rightly answer that two questions, do I have a desire for the lost souls? the lord lord give me passion for souls when what happened to the lord jesus christ when he saw those multitudes of people the bible tells us he was moved with compassion would you pray this prayer this morning and say lord give me a heart full of compassion as i already mentioned you may not be worshiping idols there are something if you love more than something else more than our savior the lord jesus christ that become an idol would you refrain from those things a clean holy life this is what god expects from his people let's pray our loving heavenly father and thank you for speaking to our hearts in jesus name i pray